Hey there viewers and welcome back to the South Main Auto Channel. That's a 2007 Hyundai Sonata 3.3. Customer says he has no AC. Did a little investigative work himself. Found a blown fuse under the hood. He tells me put a new fuse in it and it worked for, I'm trying to think the distance. He told me probably 10 minutes. Blew the fuse again. Put another fuse in it. It worked fine the next day. Drove it again blew another fuse so he says you know what probably get this fixed he said he left the blown fuse in it he didn't replace it again because he was smart enough to know that if it blows fuses there's got to be something wrong and he says it was the aircon fuse which makes sense right uh, that's aircon relay that little guy right there we just got to find the fuse aircon fuse number seven it's right next to that stud number seven He is correct. That fuse is smoked. And before people ask, these are called kiwi pliers. I don't know why they call them that. I don't know if you use them for eating kiwis. A lot of people ask what these pliers are. They're kiwi pliers. I got these off the map truck. I think Easy Red makes them. They're fantastic for pulling fuses. On a side note, so I think what we're going to do is, first of all, because he says the fuse does take some time to blow, we need to get a wiring diagram. And we also need be prepared uh, so I went and grabbed us a 10 amp fuse we're gonna stick it in this fuse loop here now sometimes I'll run the amperage through my meter so we can monitor it to what it's doing however this is a 10 amp circuit blowing a 10 amp fuse and my meter is only rated at 10 amps so uh, I don't want to nuke that so we're gonna do this we're going to use an inductive amp clamp uh, let's get a diagram see what this fuse runs I have my suspicions as to what's going on here However, let's find out. That's probably a little bit of a hard diagram to read. Uh, let's see here. So here's our air con fuse. Right there, 10 amp. This is the front corner end compartment. This is the underhood fuse box. I was looking this up and uh, there was two air con fuses, actually one inside too. So that comes down through the fuse box around town. It's gonna go through the relay when that relay closes. Out, oops. I'll do it right here. Down this wire. Yeehaw, out the connector. Down through through another connector and straight into the field coil of the AC compressor. So that is a circuit. It can't not get much simpler than that. Single wire doesn't appear to be anything else feeding off from it, uh, which is good. Which would make sense, 10 amp. Because uh, these are usually, what, an amp or two, roughly. Um, Probably, yeah, probably a smidge more than that. Maybe, maybe three, four amps on the average AC compressor at the most. So let's see what are our options. Uh, can it be a bad ground? No, uh, because remember, resistance goes up, amperage goes down. So if we had a ground, we wouldn't have a complete circuit. So that can't be it. Uh, possibilities are essentially just a short, you know, wire rub through on something when the engine torques a certain way. Perhaps this wire is rubbing somewhere spiking out the amperage or we could actually have the field coil that's starting to short uh, particularly as it gets hot and that's my suspicion because each time it's blown on them it's after an extended period of driving and what happens when you're driving different acceleration the coil is on off on off on off uh, definitely exercises it and that is my suspicion so we can either prove or disprove that so we will use advantage here we're going to use an amp clamp. Like these amp clamps, I get through AES Wave. Links down in the description box for AES Wave. If you want to go on and check out, they carry more than that. They carry all kinds of goodness. Like I say, use that link down in the description box if you're going to go over there and do some shopping. And that is also where, of course, you guys have seen this in a ton of videos, my AES Wave test kit. And that is where I got that fuse loop too. But tons of front probes, back probes, wire piercers, fuse jumpers, variable resistor. All kinds of goodies in there and a little sheet tell you what you know everything is so check them out handy tool if you have a meter and you work on cars you can't go without this trust me I mean you can but so we're gonna come down we're gonna go to graphing meter and then we're gonna go to low amps should be less than 20 hopefully it doesn't just blow the fuse right away but it didn't sound like that was the case so we'll zero this out we'll stick it on Whatever way we have it, it's going to be backwards. 
Let me go ahead and get this thing fired up. Holy smokes! Oh, okay, it was just the initial inrush of current. But look at that, that thing's running right on the verge of breakdown right now. 9.7 amps, and we actually have our clamp hooked up correctly. Miracle! Let me get this set up so I can set up the camera so you guys can see it. I'll make sure we're zero. Alright, we are zero. Yeah, so I'll tell you right now, this circuit's drawing too much current. Uh, we shouldn't be drawing essentially almost 9 amps on a 10 amp circuit. But it is pretty steady. So right away, I don't believe that we're going to be having a wire that is going to be rubbing on something or shorted. Just because our initial current here is high, I would say, you know, if this is down, you know, whatever the normal current draw is, you know, say 3 or 4 amps, if it's right down there, and I'm like, okay, you know, now I'd be thinking something else. I am curious if we can cycle this thing. Let's get that relay again. Put the third one in. I wonder if we cycle. Get this relay out here. All right, so that's the right relay. You see our amperage draw went right back to zero. I'm just kind of curious. Let's uh, let's, like, well, let's change this time basis here a little bit. I don't want that going so slow. That'll do one minute process here. That way we can see in case something happens. That's off. On. I was curious if we turn it on and off a bunch. Of course the car's cold, I just pulled it inside. Might have to let that coil get a little bit hotter. I'd like to see see it fail more than it already has. Like I say, I'm that's going to be about the only difference driving down the road. Is your is your compressor is going to cycle more than just sitting here at idle? Tell you what, I'm gonna let this run for a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can find us a compressor field coil spec for this car. Because knowing the amperage and the voltage applied, we can calculate the resistance of it. And perhaps get a answer. It's going. It's going. It's still going. 13 amps, got a good little fuse there. Going. 0.75. She's holding strong. That's a really good 10 amp fuse. Almost 13. 13 amps. Really starting to question the integrity of my fuses here. 13.2 amps. <laughs> Obviously we are way over amperage. 13.2 amps on a 10 amp circuit. That's not open the fuse. Those are Littleman fuses, just FYI. And it is pulling 13.2 amps. Let's cycle it some more here. There she goes, 13.5. 14. 
and it is gone. Put that one on the board. Ah, da, da, that's all I wanted to see. That's it, folks. There is no more to that Diag. That is exactly what I thought I was going to see happen. Now, somebody's going to question the fact that I had the idle turned up. Load on the AC compressor, physical load, its workload has really nothing to do with the resistance of the coil and the magnetic force that it puts out. Um, because if, you know, it's going to put out whatever amperage it's, you know, designed to put out, let's say, you know, four amps. And even if the compressor starts to, you know, get overloaded, yeah, I mean, it can make the clutch slip and build extra heat and ultimately ruin the coil. But by raising the RPM, the amperage should stay the same so long as our voltage stays the same. So hopefully that answers that question before somebody's asked. Why did I have the idle turned up? That's because I wanted to cycle the compressor a bunch of times to build that heat to hopefully see what we saw, which we did. I've got another fuse. I'll stick another fuse in it. I'm happy making the call on the compressor. It failed how I suspected it would. Oh, uh, you guys got to see it. Boy, it held pretty steady there around 13 amps before it finally opened our little 10 amp fuse. But like I said, these are Littleman fuses. These are not from the Dollar Tree. I'm surprised to see it hold that much amperage uh, for that long. It took, what, about 14 amps to open it. So, that's that. I'm making the call. It's going to need a compressor. So we did get the green light from the customer. Now, uh, some of you guys are going to question, you know, is it the compressor? No, technically it's not a compressor. It's the field coil. Uh, in this case, I can get a new OEM for almost the same price as just the field coil. 11-year-old car, 11-year-old compressor, all original. The customer made the smart choice and opted for the whole compressor, you know, assembly. Comes with new clutch coil, everything. Uh, the other question people are probably questioning on is, how do I know that's not a short in the wire? Because what you would have seen is you would have seen an initial low amperage draw, 3 amps, whatever. You know, get, looking at the circuit design, there's nothing else running off from it. So we would have seen that low amperage, what the circuit designed to run at, and then all of a sudden when that wire heated up or made contact with you know the ground, we would have seen, you know, boom, you know, straight up amperage spike, fuse would have blown, you know, game over. You know, as soon as the wire's removed from ground or whatever it does, you know, put a fuse in it, everything's normal again. And uh, but like I say, seeing that initial high current, eight, nine amps, you know, right in my belly down there, told me needs a new clutch coil. The initial amperage draw is too high. We certainly could have just done a resistance check on it right from the relay to ground, you know, made sure that that matched uh, the amperage that we were seeing, which I assume it would. Now, this is where sometimes ohm testing doesn't really work well because that resistance can change as heat and load are applied. You know, as we saw, obviously, the only way for that amperage to go up is for the resistance to go down. You know, it gets closer to ground. These things are only like four ohms of resistance anyway. So let's say this was at, uh, let's see, what was that, eight amps or so. So it's like 2.5 you know, ohms. It's not a big difference between four and two and a half. Amperage wise, huge difference. So uh, something to keep in mind. So that's that. I'm waiting for the compressor. I get her swapped over. We'll rerun the test. Take it from there. Through the miracle of modern television, the new compressor is installed. Gravy to install in these, takes you 10 minutes to change the compressor. About an hour to get the belt back on. What a mother lover that thing is to get in there. So I put my fuse looper back in here. We will turn this on. Put that back up there. I have no idea what this runs at. We will pop it open just how we had it, right on our graphing meter, low amps. I'll see it fired up, see what happens. And I'm gonna check out the blower. The blower is on. And there it goes, it just kicked on. 3.27 amps. Hope you guys can see that. So now you can see why we made the call we did essentially just based off the amperage draw. If I, let, I guess we could check it on and off like we did the other one. It should always come back to the same here. No big spike when it turns on. Kind of a slow build up as that coil saturates. There we go. 
Simple as that. So if you want to get a smidge nerdy with it, we have Ohm's Law, at least the way I write it out because it makes it easier for me to remember. We can look at our original AC compressor, which I'm guessing on voltage. Let's say we're at 14 volts because the car was charging. And let's say it was drawing 9.25 amps. That puts our resistance at 1.5 ohms. And then we get our new one at 14 volts, 3.25 amps, that's 4.3 ohms. So if you're looking at this, you know, one and a half ohms versus 4.3 ohms, is there a big difference? You bet there is, amperage wise. And then if we look at where it was drawn about eight and a quarter amps, that's 1.7 ohms. That's it guys, almost forgot about you. Getting ready to go home, realized I didn't do a conclusion to our video. But at this point, you see what happened. Like I say earlier, hopefully everybody understands why we did what we did based on the initial readings that we saw. And then you can see what we just did on the whiteboard, on the clipboard there, how just a couple ohms of resistance difference you know, at that voltage, that low resistance, how it can drastically change the amperage draw. So uh, hopefully that aids you in diagnosing yours and, you know, the route you might take to get yours fixed. Any questions, comments, criticisms? Oops. <laughs> Watch out, boy. <laughs> Put them in the comment box down below. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.